Good morning. It's Thursday on my staycation. So let's just recap, shall we, where we are with the reading this week. I've done super well with my reading and uh, I think I'm going to have to split this vlog up. So this is probably the start of the second part of my staycation vlog. So let's just recap where I've gotten with my reading so far with the week. I finished Edenbrook by Julian Dave Donaldson, excuse me, which is a sweet Regency romance. Um, very good fluff reading for vacation. I finished Lanny by Max Porter for the Booktube Prize, so I can't talk about that right now. And I finished Paris Trout by Pete Dexter, which I read for Barter Hordes Book Club. So that is a book club that's being run by Robert Barter Hordes, and this is our August pick, so I can't really say much about it. I will say this is 20th century fiction takes place in a small southern town um, where this man, Paris Trout, uh, um, let me see what I can uh, talk about. Okay, I can talk about it. So <laughs> Paris Trout is um, a white man who runs a store and sort of an on the side uh, loan shark business for African Americans. And he shoots and kills a young teenage girl uh, black girl. And this book is all about the subsequent fallout in the small town after that event happens. It was compulsively readable, but I don't want to go into it too much because we haven't had our book club discussion yet. But I finished that. And then I also, excuse me for the um, violent motion of the camera, um, I finished my July-August issue of The Atlantic, which was excellent, and I discussed a little bit of that in my last um, in the first part of this vlog. So then I have started, um, Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. I'm about 20% of the way into that. Um, I've started Vendetta and Death by J.D. Robb. Um, I just started this this morning. I'm already 100 pages in, so I'm feeling like this is the book that I'm gonna focus on today, probably, and probably maybe even finish today. And I am also reading, let's see if I can pull it off the pile here, um, it doesn't look very good because I took the dust jacket off, but this is The Unwomanly Face of War by Svetlana Alexievich, which is um, nonfiction, uh, oral history of the accounts of women, Russian women, um, or women from who fought in the Red Army during World War II. And uh, it's translated from the Russian, I believe. So I will be working on that as well for Women in Translation Month. So that's where we are with my reading right now. Um, and let's get back to vacation. Hey there, I just wanted to come on here and tell you that I finished Vendetta and Death yesterday uh, by J.D. Robb. And um, this is, you know, number 40 some odd in the series. So it's probably not the one you're gonna pick up first, but just wanted to give you a little summary of it. It was excellent as usual. And I apologize if you can hear the wind chimes <laughs> going in the background. It's quite breezy out here this morning. So anyway, this installment, um, the killer is uh, somebody who's named themselves Lady Justice and uh, they are kidnapping and torturing and murdering men who either rape um, and abuse women or cheat on women or somehow other um, you know hurt women so it's really a book very directly related to the Me Too movement there was very you know things that um, resembled people who have been outed in real life for their sexual predation on women. Um, and so that part of the storyline was really, really good and topical and, you know, pointed for the times. Um, and as always, the real reason I read these books is for the character relationships, which are awesome. Um, we got a little bit less, you know, on the page time of some of my favorite characters this in this installment, but the, the, um, 
the mystery quotes or air quotes around that the mystery part of the storyline because you know who the killer is you the reader know who the killer is right from the beginning um and it takes of course uh dallas and peabody a little bit longer to figure it out um and you're they're basically you know trying to track this person down but you know because you're in the mind of the killer as well um so it's not so much about the mystery in terms of it being mysterious but in terms of the storyline of why this person is taking on the persona of lady justice and what uh sort of triggered that activity that's super interesting and of course a variety of secondary characters and individual that dallas interacts with as she conducts her investigation super fascinating as always these books just really delve a lot into the human character, human condition, um, and that's what makes them so fascinating to me. So another great um, installment in the In Death series by J.D. Robb. So today, um, I'm not going to have as much time for reading today. I have to run down to my local library, and we're going to go out, um, out to lunch at a, uh, a seaside takeout type place where I always take my daughter once a year for her annual lobster roll. <laughs> when you're from Maine, you don't eat regularly lobster rolls unless you're, um, you know, the family of a lobster fisherman, which my son is a lobster fisherman, but um, I don't like lobster. My husband doesn't particularly like lobster, but my daughter loves lobster. So you'll see some clips of uh, us enjoying lunch this afternoon, but I do plan to start my next, um, Apologize for the glare. My next book two prize book, this is A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. So I'll be starting this book today. to wrap this second part of the staycation vlog up. As you can see from my background, I'm back at my house, sadly. Uh, we've come home from camp uh, and we had a lovely, lovely week. The weather was gorgeous. We, did, we couldn't have asked for better summer weather. Lots of laying around, relaxing, boating, swimming, um, ranger rides, just everything. It was perfect um, and I really enjoyed myself. So. 
Uh, I've already spoken. I did a little summary at the beginning of this part of the vlog about what I had finished at the first half of the week. And um, I haven't finished any, oh, I take that back. I did finish, um, two days ago, I finished Love Poems for Married People. Um, I can't remember the author's name, so I will put a picture up here. I had picked that one up uh, after I saw Heather over at Soggy Expat Book Nerd talk about it. And it's just a collection of really funny poems. And if you're a married person, it really, they really do, uh, they really do um, have some really funny bits that are relatable. So I very much enjoyed that. It's a really short, quick read, um, only about 110 pages long. So I finished that. Um, I've been working on my next book two prize book. This is uh, a single thread by Tracy Chevalier. I am about a third of the way through this one and it's historical fiction. Um, and I've also been working on a woman in translation book. This is The Unwomanly Face of War, an oral history of women in World War II by Svetlana Alexievich, excuse me. Um, and I really enjoyed her Voices from Chernobyl. So when I was able to pick this one up from the library book sale last year, I was really excited about it. Um, and I am about halfway through this one. It is really <laughs> sad and dark and depressing what these women went through. This is um, firsthand accounts of women who were on the front line during World War II, um, women who fought for the Russian army. So it's quite, quite dark and just amazing what these women did. And at very young ages, like most of the women that she is interviewing were like 15, 16, 17 years old um, during World War II. So yeah, really, really good, but also really hard to read about. And then I am about halfway through Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons, which is a very English novel that takes place um, in the early part of the 20th century, like the first probably before 1950, but I'm not really sure exactly when. Um, but our main character has gone to Cold Comfort Farm because these folks are distant relatives of hers and she doesn't really want to, um, she's finished university, but she doesn't really want to get a job. So she decided that she's going to just sponge off um, distant relatives. And so she's arrived at Cold Comfort Farm and it's just a weirdest, weirdest place. And she's like determined she's going to get them organized and get them like operating to her standards. And it's quite amusing and also just a little bit strange as British humor often is to me. So very much enjoying that as well. So I think it's been a very successful vacation in terms of my reading. Um, I hope you've all been enjoying some nice August weather where you are and have found some good books to read and I will talk to you later.